Hey everyone and welcome back in. Well, we're going to return back to our FJ43. This will be different from the first one we did. That was the pickup truck. This is going to be the SUV version. Quite a few similarities here, but we're going to do something a little bit different with this one. Of course, the box art shows some alternatives that we could use for painting. Crack open the box and a lot of this is going to look very familiar. There is an insert showing a little bit of detailing on some of the accessories and of course the instruction booklet with the box art replicated on the front cover and a few decals to go along the way. Opening up the instruction booklet, again, this is going to look very familiar. This is exactly the same process, exactly the same kit up to a certain point as the FJ43 pickup truck. New sprues include the interior, so the bench seats, and also the new roof um, for the hardtop version here right at the end. And then, of course, we can see some of the color plates as the booklet concludes. Well, let's get started. And what are we going to be doing different with this one? Well, first off, as you can see, we're going to be doing a civilian vehicle rather than the military version. And secondly, I want to try some, I'm calling it abrasion techniques for weathering. Because this kit is so similar to the original pickup truck version, I'm going to not really go into the construction here. If you want to see more of the construction steps, I'll leave a link up there on the top corner there. And that will take you back to the FJ43, the pickup truck version, where you can see more of the construction. In this video, we're going to be working on painting and weathering. At least getting a start at it. I did spend a few moments flipping through the old Toyota catalogs, and I really do like this color, this light bluish gray color. So I think that's the, kind of where I'm going to take the theme on this, this project. So I'll begin laying down the base colors using AK Real Colors. And these are a combination of actually air colors. So what's nice about these is that they actually have a bit of a, a satin or semi-gloss sheen to them when dry, which is perfect for a civilian vehicle. Along with the idea of this abrasion technique that we'll get to in a little while um, in terms of weathering, I also want to see how far I can push weathering using acrylic paints versus if you followed any of my videos you'll know that I generally turn to oil paints right off the bat. So that's where my primary weathering generally lands. But this time let's see what we can do with the acrylics. Well first off here because again we can look inside this interior once we get everything buttoned up. I want to add some chipping and scuffing here in the rear area, especially because those big bench seats are going to be there. And so people have been coming in and out and equipment's been sliding in and out. This is going to be a fairly well used uh, vehicle, that's for sure. Something that's been on expeditions, let's say. Once I get a good pattern of the chip marks and abrasions, then I can come back in and just start adding some dust and dirt tones. Again, using the acrylic paints. Trick here is simply to use small spaces, so work in small spaces. The paints are somewhat thinned down with water at this point, but it's not necessarily thin paint. I'm really basically painting the weathering effects. I do like this technique and I'm going to be employing that more. We'll use it for the rest of the vehicle and the exterior as well. But there gets to be this point where I just feel like we can add just a little more depth, a little more visual interest to these effects. So yeah, I'm going to go back into some of my oils here, but we're going to do these oils in a much more limited basis on this vehicle. As you can see, the acrylic effects look pretty darn nice and so I'm pretty happy with those. So I'm just going to use some of these oils and basically just add almost just some light washes here and there just to kind of enhance some of the shadows. Maybe even like traditional pin wash here and there just, just to bring out those details and edges on those surface features. Of course the interior, especially the rear end, includes some extra details here. Those would be those large bench seats and I'll just paint those out in a kind of a yellow ochre tan color-ish here. And this is based on the callouts both in the kit and then looking at some of those Toyota references. And then once those are all painted up, I'll just go ahead and pop those into place. And then here we go. We've got our interior basically done here. So let's not a lot of work. This kit goes together very, very quickly. It's a, it's a nice, fun build to do. This certainly could be a weekend project if you so chose to really blaze through it. 
Now that I've got the interior basically ready to go, we can start thinking about the exterior. So first off, I'm going to mask up those large windows. Just make sure my overspray doesn't get all over on the inside of the vehicle here as I start working on it. And then let's just do a couple test fits here. Let's see what this is going to look like. And you can see this kit is so nicely constructed. Everything just basically friction fits into place. Very nice. Okay, now this is where this next part of this idea, this abrasion technique is going to start coming into play. So we're going to build this up as if we were going to be doing chipping, like with hairspray or something like that. But instead, we're going to use all sorts of sandpaper, basically, and sanding sticks and try to rub back or abrase back the different layers of paint to get back into the underlying colors. So first off, We'll just give it a primer color. So this is again AK Real Colors, red brown. This will be our base level primer color. Of course, this color is going to be applied to all the exterior surfaces around the vehicle. So then next up, there when I see this type of it's almost like paint fading versus scratches or chips. That's kind of what I'm trying to go for here. And I always see a multiple layer there. So there'd be maybe the underlying primer color or even rust, but there's always this secondary layer that's between the paint and the base layer. And it tends to always be a yellowish shade. And so that's what I'm gonna to try to mimic here. So everything gets painted once again. So we've got our base color of our red oxide. And now this light tan yellow color they're going to apply everywhere as well over the top of that so we'll have two layers of i guess you call underlying base colors here or primer colors this is that time where i get to say thank you to my patreon if you are enjoying this channel and like the content here please consider supporting this channel further by joining patreon over there early view into these videos special patreons feature videos works in progress photographs a discord server I do encourage you to come over and check us out, and I would appreciate your support. Thanks. And then finally, with those colors applied, I can go ahead and start working on this, the general exterior color, the blue-gray color. And once again, that will be using AK Real Colors. This is the same colors that we used on the interior of the vehicle. And just apply those overall, give them a nice, even, smooth coat. <laughs> And then as a last note, just add a little bit of light sky blue to the mix here. And that's just going to give me a little bit of sun fading and a little bit lighter effects. And just, just randomly overall, not just kind of a cloud pattern. But then when we get to the top of the vehicle, well, then the exterior color is white. Again, we're just applying this white color over the top of the base oxide red or the red primer color, and then that tan color. And now we apply the top layer or the final coat of what will be the exterior color white. It doesn't take too long before I get to a spot where I feel like I can pull off the masking tape and we can start working on some of the details before we really get to that part where we're going to spend some time here to, trying to do that abrasion weathering. At this stage, there's really not very many exterior details I need to worry about. A lot of those will be added later on, but I do want to take care of the rubber portion, I guess, the gaskets trim, the rubber trim around those windows before I get started with diving into this abrasion stuff. And here we are, speaking of that abrasion stuff, let's get started here. Well, what I've got is a selection of different grits of sandpaper. I have 2,000, 1,500, and 600. Those are my primary three that I'm using. I also have a sanding stick that has four different grits. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what those are. The basic idea here is to carefully, <laughs> carefully just rub back the paint until you begin to start to expose those layers underneath. 
Now, pay attention here as you do this. Pay attention to the, again, the pressure of, of how you're sanding it, the grit of the paper, because sometimes you're polishing and sometimes you're removing a little bit. So going back and forth between, say, a 1500 and a 600 from time to time, just to kind of start things and then polish it back out. And then also I'm, I'm aware of the motion of, the, of my, my hands, how, the direction that I'm sanding, because I want these to look, I, I want them to look natural and not haphazard here. Just so I want to try to try to maintain that sense of realism. And of course, in front of me, I have photographs of all sorts of vehicles and that have this type of uh, a wear effect on them. And I'm trying to look for spots and places that those have on those, their, those vehicles, those references that I can incorporate onto this model. Now, I think this is a good thing. This is not a quick technique. Um, I was somewhat surprised because I thought that I would get through those paint layers rather quickly. And, and I did some experimenting, of course, before I started on the vehicle itself. And that's why I selected the particular groups of sandpaper, the 2000, the 1500, and the 600, um, as I did, because those seemed to work well together. But again, the, the touch is really very, very light here, and I'm just trying to slowly work into those effects. So it does take a little bit of time. It actually takes <laughs> quite a bit of time, because again, I'm really trying to be careful and mindful of, of how these effects are applied, where they're applied, and not to go too far and get back down to the say the bare plastic. I found it helpful and even important from time to time because these are still not all assembled together to put some of these pieces together to make sure I had continuity for instance from the top and the bottom of the vehicle here. At this point, I'm just going to leave this alone because I think I think it's far enough. You're never quite sure. I can always go back and take more off, but it's going to be a little more difficult to put things back on. So let's go ahead and get back to the roof. So again, this was painted out as a white exterior color, but those same layers of primer are underneath the red, brown, and then that tan color. Same process here, just doing some rubbing with the sandpaper just to expose what would be a, a rust streak or a wear marks down the center of of the roof and this is a very common weathered appearance you see on all sorts of different types of vehicles time for another test fit here let's see how this is all coming together and yeah this is not so bad i'm liking this um i'm gonna stop here with the sanding because i think it's time to start weathering i'm gonna choose some colors again i'm gonna try to push the acrylics in terms of weathering this out as far as i possibly can before Ultimately, I'll probably choose to use a few oils here and there, but in a much more limited manner. I've got some acrylic colors that very closely match the real colors that are the base exterior colors. And then I've chosen a couple of colors that will be the same colors used on the interior for the weathering of the dirt and dust effects. So lay out those colors on my palette. And I am on the exterior in particular because there are larger panels. So... I want to make sure that I want to have time to work with the colors over a longer period of time and even blend the colors. So I will be using a little bit of retarder, just a few drops there in the middle, and then mix those colors in with the retarder. And this just extends the drying time and facilitates blending. Which brings us to the end of this. We are set up and ready to go. In the next episode, we will do all sorts of weathering on this vehicle. I have a figure that we'll be painting out. And then, of course, if we have a figure and a vehicle, we'll be placing it onto a final scene and we'll be building that as well. So a lot more to come in this episode or the next episode, maybe two episodes. Let's see how this goes. I'm still trying to catch up here. Uh, so we're not complete with everything yet. So we'll see how much time we have. In the meantime, if you do like this episode, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you'd like to support this channel further, I do have a Patreon page and I'd appreciate your support over there. Until the next episode, guys, take care and happy modeling.